Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. In today's video, I'd like to share with you what I think are the essential pieces of equipment any pianist needs to have in order to be able to practice effectively. And then also to share why I think now technology can really be our friend here. So if you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. Of course, naturally, we need to have a piano if we to make any real progress. So let's just assume that for today, we've all got a piano and that's not the issue. So what other things do we need? Well, on my hit list, I've got some obvious things. We need music. We need music books of some description. I think most of us learn from music, so without these, we wouldn't be able to go far. We also really need to have copies of the score, you know, so we can make our notes, whether it be our fingerings, whether it be notes to ourselves about things we need to improve, things we need to think about. So this is really useful, because otherwise you end up needing to damage the expensive books that you've bought. Of course, where would we be without the nice click, click, click of our metronome? Depending on how we like to practice, some people use them more than others, but I think to have a metronome is important, no matter what, what you wish to do. Of course, another important thing to have is a watch or a timer of some description. We need to be able to keep track of how long we've been practicing. Maybe we want to also keep a track of how long we've been practicing specific, specific pieces of the work that we're working on so we can track our progress. So this also very important. I think a notebook and pen is also very necessary. If you take lessons, it can be good to keep notes from your lessons. If you are working at home by yourself, it's useful to note down the things that you want to work to maybe map out your practice plan. So a notebook of some description is important. I think also it's useful to have manuscript paper. I found it useful when I was young, I had to actually create my own manuscript paper. I remember sitting there for hours with a ruler and a pen, drawing five lines across a piece of paper. Because it's useful to note down ideas or things that you want to be able to work through in musical notation. So, manuscript paper. And then I think probably the final thing to have is some kind of recording equipment. I've seen advice from many great teachers on YouTube and other places that one of the best ways to actually make progress fast is to record yourself, watch and listen to the way you play, so that you can start to spot things without relying exclusively on your teacher to spot them for you. How then is technology our friend when we're practicing the piano? I quite quickly came to the conclusion that really the only thing I needed to have with me to be able to practice properly was a tablet. You know, I've owned an iPad since the days of the iPad 2, and when I restarted learning piano, I found that I used it quite extensively in my practice pretty much every day. So let's look at the things I mentioned before one by one and see how the iPad can help us here. Let's talk about sheet music first. Now, here, the iPad helps in a couple of ways, really. The first is, of course, that there is a fantastic, free, and more importantly, completely legal resource on the internet called the Petrucci Music Library. If you Google impsl.org, you'll find this library there. And you can pretty much search for any sheet music that you want, and you can download it completely free of charge. To benefit from this resource using your iPad, of course, you simply open Safari, you go to impsl.org, you search for the music that you want, and then you're just able to download a copy direct to your iPad. Couldn't be simpler than that. Now, the next way the iPad helps us 
is that you can get apps that allow you to actually organize and store your sheet music in a much more easy to access way. So the one I use is called Fourscore. I've had it pretty much since I restarted learning the piano, completely free to download at the time. And you basically use Safari to tell it to move the copy that you've just downloaded into Fourscore for you. Once you do this, you need to tidy up the details a little bit. You'll need to tidy up the title. You can add the composer and all of these things. But that doesn't take very long to do. And once you've done it, it's there in your own personal music library right on your iPad. Another thing you can do with this app is you can also then organize your music into set lists, a little bit like playlists on an MP3 player or an iPod. So that I use all the time, for example, for the pieces that I'm working on currently, I add them to a practice set list so that they're easier to find when I want to look them up. As an added bonus, you can also then make notes to your heart's content on these electric copies of the score that are on your iPad. You can highlight things, you can add your finger in, do anything that you need to do really with them. And if you want to remove those notes afterwards, you can simply rub them out. Simple as that. For the metronome, there is a choice of apps you can use. The one I use is free. It's called Metronome, quite simply, and it's from a company called Soundbrenner. This great little app has many useful features that an old-fashioned manual metronome doesn't have. For example, you can set your time signature so that it will accent the first beat of each bar for you as it clicks, and that helps you to keep track of your rhythm. It has a useful way of actually setting the BPM rather than needing to work out a number value. You just tap the metronome with the speed that you think you want to have, and it will work out the beats per minute for you. Or, of course, you can simply set the beats per minute yourself. And, of course, let's not forget your iPad. It has a watch, it has a timer, it has a stopwatch. So anything to do with timing yourself, anything to do with working out how long you want to spend and having a stopwatch go while you're practicing can all be done very, very simply from your iPad. Of course, if you want to now take basic notes about your practice or make basic notes about your plans, you can easily use a tablet to do all of that. There are a host of spreadsheets, word processing type applications that you can use. If you want to take simple notes, there are note-taking applications. So the one that I use is NoteShelf. If you wanted to use this, you could create yourself a piano practice notebook within the app. Within this notebook, you would then be able to make notes to your heart's content about what it is you want to achieve, advice that's been given to you by your teacher, and it's all there, no separate book to carry around with you. I used to use an app that I downloaded from the App Store some years ago. And what this app did was it effectively enabled me to keep a track of how much time I'd spent practicing on the various pieces of repertoire I was looking at, as well as keeping simple notes and simple goals such as BPM and things like this. Unfortunately, that app suddenly stopped working. I think it was something to do with iOS no longer supporting apps built using 32 bits, whatever that means. And that was sort of quite annoying. So once that stopped working, for a while I used the spreadsheets to keep track of everything. But then after that, I actually decided, oh, I've had enough of this, and I built myself an app that runs on my iPad that enables me to do you know, simple things such as create a practice plan, record the amount of time that I've spent practicing something. I even amuse myself by adding a few graphs and things like this that show the practice that I've done over the last week or month. One day I'll do a detailed video on the app that I did. When it comes to manuscript paper, you might have guessed there's an app for that too. So the one I've been using for many years is called Symphony Pro. It's now Symphony Pro 5. And this is a fantastic little app that allows you to create a project. You can use a template, for example, a grand piano template, where it will set out double staves for you, treble clef, bass clef. You can simply enter your time signature, your key signature, and it adds the necessary markings to the score for you. 
Then when you want to add the music, you simply select the type of note you want and you place it where you need it, on the stave. And the app takes care of the rest. It's even clever enough to add the bar lines automatically or the measure lines perhaps you might be more familiar with. And finally, as if all of that wasn't enough, this app will actually play back what you've written to you so that you can check it for accuracy with your ears rather than just your eyes. Try doing that with a pencil and paper. Say the camera never lies, and of course I'm sure the same is true for video cameras. I first really got the idea of recording myself as part of my practice regime from Josh Wright. And he did a video in this and said basically it's the biggest game changer in terms of making progress fast. Record your sessions and play back and watch back and see how you're performing. So of course to do that, your tablet takes care of it all for you. High quality video recording is all built in. The audio is reasonably enough if you're just using it for yourself. You can also record audio only if that's what you prefer rather than watching yourself play. Over the coming weeks, I am going to record a series of videos about recording yourself, really more for sharing your work, I guess. And these will start with very simple, just how to add a little bit more interest to a standard video to slightly more advanced techniques where you can dramatically improve both the video and the audio quality of what you do. If you haven't already, now would be a good time to subscribe, click the notification bell, and then you'll be informed of these videos as they're released in the next few weeks. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.